All right, we're going to go ahead and get started as a few more people are trickling in, but I um, want to make sure we stay within the time constraints. All right, so uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Spiro Theodore from Churn Zero speaking. Um, I'm an account executive here, uh, work on the sales team. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, uh, the customer journey and how to drive desired outcomes. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics because as a former CSM myself, it was always something I somewhat struggled with. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge, especially early on. Um, I was always good at you know, staying organized and you know, taking care of everything I needed to, but it was really hard for me initially to measure what my customers were doing any impact I was making, and of course, you know, making sure my customers were receiving or seeing ROI in my product. Um, so for today's webinar, I'm going to talk about a couple different scenarios, topics, if you will, that um, come up quite frequently. You know, I work with CS leaders every single day. Um, so I thought I would share with you a couple different scenarios uh, that I come across and best practices that we recommend to our prospects and customers alike. So before we jump into the first topic here, we're going to do a quick poll just to see um, what everybody thinks. Right. Wait about 30 seconds or so, and then we'll take a look at the results. All right, let's take a look at the results here. So we've got 21% um, saying often, um, 66 sometimes, 10% rarely, 3% never. Um, all those three percenters, shout out. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you know, what I see, you know, most common here at Churn Zero is a couple things. You know, for one, you know, everyone has seen, you know, stats like this at some point in time. 55% of people returned a product because they didn't understand how to use it. 63% of buyers ask about onboarding as part of their purchasing decision. And of course, you know, a very common stat, much more costly to acquire than to retain. Um, there's no question that onboarding is very critical to your success, your customer having a positive experience. But when I meet with a lot of prospects, um, this always comes up because there's a lot of things that happen in between onboarding and renewal. And I'm not talking about the generic QBRs, that sort of thing. I'm talking about being laser focused at every single customer lifecycle stage. You know, most folks build out a really strong onboarding journey, um, and then it's a series of QBRs, and then the renewal. So what Churn Zero preaches is we recommend proactively managing every stage of the customer journey. That way you guys can be laser focused. So a couple examples here, you know, after someone is onboarded, start thinking about ways you can develop a really regimented adoption and expansion game plan or when it comes to advocacy, you know, what we're able to do. Um, you know, thinking about something like finding upsells or expansions, you know, maybe what we do is we look at some key milestones, like sticky features being used, product usage, hitting certain thresholds, support tickets are low, customers seeing ROI. Those are the spe specific milestones we think you should be tracking to potentially spark those expansion opportunities. So one story I will tell you about myself as a former CSM from a company called uh, Discover Org, um, now rebranded as ZoomInfo, I got really good at using miles, uh, milestones to break into other departments, meaning someone would typically buy ZoomInfo or Discover Org because they wanted to increase you know, the leads that BDRs were generating. Maybe they wanna drive more people to their website. Uh, maybe they're trying to get people to attend event, an event. Um, now, the product did a lot more than just one of those things, but that's why someone bought. So what I did was I got into a really good habit of learning and measuring my customers' goals very early in the journey. And then as soon as I was able to prove that ROI, meaning when that 
develop, business development team was able to increase their meetings generated 3x at the six month mark, it made it really easy for me to break into other departments. Um, and the way I did that was by literally managing their expectations, my internal tasks, and really tying them to those specific milestones. So really want everyone to start thinking about, hey, in between onboarding and renewal, what should we be focused on? What milestones we wanna measure? What outcomes do we wanna drive? Is it an expansion opportunity? Is it getting into a new, new department? Is it someone writing a review for you on G2 Crowd? All things that we can achieve using milestones. So let's jump into the next poll here. Are you tracking customer performance at key milestones? And we're gonna tee up the poll right now and give everybody an opportunity to respond. All right, let's take a look at the results here. We've got 60% yes, 40% no. Um, and, and that's okay, because uh, I was definitely uh, a no <laughs> when I was a CSM um, before I implemented some really key strategies to help me fine tune my processes. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about briefly is what churn zero categorizes as a journey, what that means to us, and what we're thinking about when we are talking about journeys. So essentially, um, you know, most customers, most co companies for that matter, they do a really good job at managing their milestones. What do I need to do? What tasks are uh, my team is responsible for? Um, what a lot of people miss out on is what your customer is doing, those outcomes. Are they seeing value? Are they hitting a certain percentage of license utilization? Are they achieving their goals? So the way Churn Zero is built, you know, we've got a concept called achievements, and that's our way of measuring those really specific outcomes along the way. So a little bit another story about myself as a CSM. You know, I did a lot of onboarding, a lot of training. I uh, help people get Discover Work set it up and integrated with their Salesforce and their Marketo instances. Um, I did all that stuff. But I really had no way of knowing what my customers were doing. And unfortunately, I would be retraining people. I would have to schedule secondary integration calls. And quite frankly, I spent a lot of time praying or guessing because I wasn't sure what my customers were doing. And I think that's a common uh, theme for a lot of customer success teams. Um, and we've really built that same sort of functionality directly into our product. That's how common it is. So what I've got here is a snapshot of a similar scenario. Um, it's an example of a milestone inside of Churn Zero. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, super simple to tackle your internal tasks. You know, we send a welcome email to the customer. We have a discovery call, uh, we collect their deliverables, and then we'll schedule some additional meetings. Um, a lot of teams are really good at that, um, even those 40% from the last poll. But it's far more difficult to measure outcomes or achievements. Um, so that's really where Churn Zero focuses, is keeping both parties accountable. That way, when you move on to the second milestone and you're training these folks, you never have to guess, you never have to doubt, uh, because we know we've been measuring that stuff in real time. And what's really cool about this, you don't need a CS tool, you don't need to be a Churn Zero customer to do this. As I mentioned, I did something very similar when I was a CSM and I did not have Churn Zero. I was using Salesforce and spreadsheets. Um, and sometimes it's something super simple, as simple as picking up a phone, asking your customers why they bought from you in the first place, and then tracking their progress using Salesforce cases and tasks, or even something as simple as a spreadsheet. Um, so that is definitely a big area that we see um, and a big differentiator, um, because not only are we tracking what you do, we're also gonna hold your customers to the same milestone. We've got another uh, poll here. 
how often does your customer journey change? We'll give everybody a couple moments. All right, we've got almost everyone has responded to the poll and we've got almost an even split between often, sometimes, and rarely. Only 3% have said never. Um, you know, I think this is honestly kind of a trick question because if you think about it, you know, customer journeys are always going to change. You know, needs change, personnel changes, you know, People have things that come up in their personal lives and, you know, meetings get rescheduled, trainings get pushed out. Um, so definitely it's, it's, it's impossible to ensure that the customer journey is never going to change. Where I was going with this was more about how important it is to standardize the customer journey. You know, I talk to a lot of companies, maybe they've got a really complex product or maybe they're a higher touch team with large corporate accounts. CSM's only got a handful of them. Um, a lot of times, you know, those folks will tell me, hey, well, we can't do this because every customer journey is different. Every customer is onboarded differently, et cetera. Um, the round of the situation, there's always going to be some distinct milestones that we can set forth. So there's somewhat of a prescriptive customer experience. You know, everybody's got to be onboarded. Everybody's got to be trained. We want to make sure they're adopting the product. And we want to make sure that they're renewing. Um, you know, I think, you know, there's a big, there's a lot to be said about creating that standardized process. That doesn't mean every customer has to do the exact same thing, but the more you can standardize, the better. Uh, and it really comes down to three things for us here at Churn Zero. Um, one, you know, if you do have a standardized journey, whether it's for onboarding or adoption, any of the stages, you're going to be able to identify, you know, the, uh, the specific bottlenecks that might be causing issues. You know, if you're onboarding customers and you can find out that, hey, only 25 of our new customers last quarter completed this worksheet for us the day it was due, you know, that's really impactful information. Uh, that's things we're going to want to know because one of your OKRs from 2021 might be shortening time to value. By input, inputting a standardized customer journey, we also get some enhanced reporting capabilities. You know, if every customer went, you know, was onboarded in a different way, and you know, chief customer officer wanted to see how many accounts were behind or where certain accounts stood in the process, it's gonna be extremely manual to do so. So that's why we recommend, even if you know, things change on the fly, creating some sort of standard process is going to give your executive team a ton of visibility into those KPIs and metrics. And lastly, you know, this milestone data, you know, it's not, going to be used for just one thing. It's really going to touch multiple uh, areas of the business, meaning if we can take milestone data and have that stuff impact a health score, you know, that's a home run, um, especially for those customers that are you're working, you're working with hand in hand in those higher touch relationships. But we also have the ability to use these sorts of uh, milestones or milestone data um, to create some sort of calls to action. So, you know, without a standardized process, maybe you don't know something's wrong until you pick up the phone and call a customer or you wait till that next meeting. If you have a regimented process and you're monitor monitoring what your customers are doing, you know, you'll be able to know in real time whether or not things are happening and not happening. And then a simple Salesforce task can be created when a milestone is not met or when a customer has not been trained. So definitely some things to think about if you are a higher touch team or you have a more complex product or everybody kind of does things their own way and it's more of a you know, tribal knowledge situation, standardization is going to have a huge impact on your business. So to kind of wrap things up, you know, a couple of takeaways, you know, the customer journey, it's gonna go far beyond onboarding and renewal. All those different touch points in between, we wanna make sure we're offering a prescriptive customer experience and we're really capitalizing on those key inflection points that could lead to advocacy and expansion situations. Um, second, 
when it comes to tracking progress, it does not matter how well you track what you're doing internally. If you're not tracking what your customers are doing, you're wholeheartedly missing out. And third, by standardizing the customer journey, it's going to have a drastic impact on the business. Um, folks responsible for service delivery, they're going to shorten time to value. Your leadership team, they're going to know where all the customers stand, and you're going to be able to use this milestone data to trigger all sorts of calls to action or something as simple as impacting a health score. And that was everything I wanted to cover today, but we do have a few minutes open. So if there are any questions, I would be more than happy to address them. Anyone wants to send them in the uh, webinar window. Uh, one question just came in around trials. Um, do you guys work with a lot of companies that offer trials? Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, it's a primary use case for our um, journeys with Insurance Zero. Um, one, uh, one customer story. So this is a case study on our website. Anyone can check it out. It's a company called RFP360. Uh, they're based in um, Missouri. Um, they sell RFP software, if you couldn't tell by the company name. But essentially what they do is they take all of their new customers and when someone signs up for a trial, they add them to a journey and they monitor the progress of that journey. As specific milestones are achieved and positive things happen, well, that triggers a workflow in which a sales rep and a CSM get involved and they then convert that customer to a paying account. Um, and when things go sideways or when uh, the customers are not doing what we want them to do or a milestone is missed, there's a series of playbooks that automatically trigger. And those playbooks can consist of a strategic touch point from a CSM, or they might consist of an automated email, maybe pointing them in the right direction, giving them to attend a webinar or to check out the knowledge base or some self-help but definitely a great use case for churn zero and a key part of the customer journey. And there's another question here, are milestone, milestones and customer goals customer agnostic or does each customer have individual milestones? So, um, so to answer that and uh, not so, I guess it could go either way. Um, you know, we have some customers where everyone is using the same uh, templates meaning you've got 10,000 customers and the SMB customers go down one pathway for specific milestones. The mid-market accounts are gonna have different milestones, different journeys, much different than the enterprise team. Um, now we create those standard milestones um, so we can report on them very well. Now, what we can also do is we've got a ton of flexibility because as I said, things change, things come up, you might onboard a unique customer. Maybe they're not as perfect of a fit. Something needs to change on the fly. Within a milestone, you can actually add custom tasks and custom achievements as they come up. So that way you're still maintaining um, the architecture that allows Churn Zero to report in a strong way, and but you're not going to miss out or forego um, any of those touch points that warrant um, you know, some um, some more custom customized workflows. So it uh, does not typically, the milestones are gonna be specific most likely to your segment, but every customer, uh, you have the ability to, to customize that journey as things change. What is the common milestone that you see getting missed? Uh, this is a good one. Um, you know, honestly, it depends on the um, team structure. You know, I think when it comes to like a lower touch uh, team or lower touch uh, customer base, uh, it's all about getting those sticky features set up and um, making sure they're, you know, logging in or they're uh, re reaching license utilization. Um, those are probably the two most common that I see missed with lower touch teams. 
when it comes to the higher touch teams, uh, more complex products, it's really around those use cases, very similar to the story I told about um, those discover work days. Um, someone buys for a specific reason, we address that use case and move on to the next one. I think that's where people really miss out because there's a lot more open-ended variables. There's a lot more things that can go wrong, um, but it really depends um, on, on kind of the team structure and hierarchy. And I've got one last question here that we'll address. Um, so this person is saying that professional services handles implementation, and if we work with those sorts of companies, um, the answer uh, at times yes. Um, you know, as you can imagine, you know, implementing and onboarding is um, definitely a, a big part of what Churn Zero can do. Um, for professional service teams, it's a little bit different. Meaning, if your resources are billable and you're invoicing customers for hours of work, uh, you know, time and material, uh, there are tools out there that um, are really built for that sort of stuff. Um, we definitely don't want to, because uh, we're not, we're never going to replace like a full-blown project management application. Um, what I've seen customers do when the professional services team is actually implementing and in the weeds is they'll maybe create a higher level overarching customer journey in which you know, they're kind of, to use a football analogy, not so much a quarterback, more of an offensive coordinator when implementation is going on. So they're making sure things are happening. They're not actually, you know, in the field or working with the customer. Uh, but then from there, we're going to move right into things like training, advocacy, and so forth. So it's just a, looking at the customer journey through a different lens, uh, because like I said, there are tools out there um, that, you know, are, you know, connect right into how you're billing customers for time and, and resources. Um, and that's not exactly something that Churn Zero does all that well. So um, we can work with those teams. Um, it really just depends on what that team does and how you might collaborate with the customer success team. And I think that no other questions have come in. I've come in. Um, everybody gets a few minutes of their day back. Uh, this recording will be available on our website. It'll probably be sent uh, in an email from our marketing team as well. Um, if you liked any of what you heard today, definitely recommend going our, on our website, um, checking out some of our blogs. Uh, there's tons of case studies that call out, um, you know, how people are managing the customer journey with Churn Zero. And then of course, if anyone has any more specific questions and they want to contact me directly, my email address is right here. I'm on LinkedIn. Always happy to help.